I went to Edinburgh Castle, so you don't have to. Welcome to Walk About Edinburgh with David Basson. I am your host, David Basson. Now, I've been a tour guide here in Edinburgh for the past 10 years, and I've been doing a lot of castle tours, and one thing I never thought about is, is the castle really worth going to? You see, I love history, and I always get in there for free. That's what I'm gonna look into today. Now today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the castle, some of the stuff you'll see, a little bit of the history, and then I'm gonna try to give an unbiased opinion as to whether you should visit the castle or not. Now, first of all, when you come up to the castle, you actually see the best part of the castle straight away. And that is the Castle Esplanade. Um, that's my cat Sassy in the background, by the way. <laughs> now, um, the Castle Esplanade, that is the best place to get the photos. It is pretty. It's actually one part of the castle that is built to be pretty. That was built up by Queen Victoria in the 19th century. She walked up to Edinburgh Castle and went, this is not the Edinburgh of my dreams. She was very upset. So she built a new portcullis gates just to look sexy, complete with a moat. Even though moats only work on ground level, so there's never any water in the moats. Now once you get past the castle esplanade, that's when things take a bit of a turn. You see, Edinburgh Castle was built to scare off people, well, particularly English people. So Edinburgh Castle is a more scary, intimidating looking place. It was always meant to be a military castle. Now, that's not to say that it's ugly. I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Some people might look at a rock and say, that's sexy, like a geologist. I, I imagine that's what geologists think. You then start heading up the pathway and you'll see Argyle's Tower. Argyle's Tower is the actual entrance into Edinburgh Castle. There used to be three doors, now there's only two, and one of them doesn't come down. Argyle's Tower itself is named for the Duke of Argyle, who was sentenced to be beheaded, but the night before his execution, he had a big party up there with the soldiers, and the next day got his head chopped off. I do like going into Argyle's Tower. It's got this nice little rundown of the castle history during the Scottish War of Independence, basically what the movie Braveheart is based on. Now from there you'll see all the cannons along the battery, that's also called Argyle's Battery. But you'll see the main cannon, and that is the one o'clock gun. That would go off eight seconds before one o'clock, that way eight seconds later the sound would reach the docks, and you know exactly when one o'clock was. And the reason why it was the one o'clock gun, not say the twelve o'clock gun, is so they wouldn't have to waste twelve other shots before you got to the main one. Nowadays it goes off at exactly one o'clock, and if you do want to see the one o'clock gun, you have to get there about 10 minutes early because it does get quite crowded. In fact, the best place to view it is uh, right next to Margaret's Chapel. You'll also see the Redcoats Cafe. Now the staff members inside the Redcoats Cafe, they are really cool. Um, I speak to them a lot. I actually had a photo taken recently with one of them. But uh, about the cafe, I'd say only get coffee. Because the food is ridiculously overpriced. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but as long as you keep your ticket, you can leave Edinburgh Castle and come back in. Just let the people know at the entranceway. So if you want, you can briefly leave, grab something to eat from the city and then come back again. What I suggest is you bring something to eat with you or you eat beforehand, rather than paying the ridiculous prices of the castle. Now from there, you can go see the west end of the castle. That's where the War Museum is, the National War Museum. Now if you like, Guns and medallions uh, do have a walk around, so if you are going to have a wander through, what I find the most interesting is the old propaganda posters trying to encourage men to join the army. There's also a statue to Earl Douglas Haig. He's a bit of a controversial commander. He was heralded as a great commander until they realised his tactics led to the death of roughly two million British soldiers. So they're kind of hiding his statue out the back. Also, the prettiest part is if you go up the stairs, you'll see a great view of the West End of Edinburgh. Now from there, I'd say check out the Prisoners of War Museum. Just walk up from the West End, turn right and continue up the hill. You get to see how those prisoners roughed it up during the war times. What I find the most interesting is that the American soldiers who were kept there during the American War of Independence they etched the American flag into the doors. 
From there, head through Fugsgate, and that's where you'll see the oldest building still active in Scotland, Margaret's Chapel. That goes back to 1130, and by the way, it is tiny. It does have a stained glass window to William Wallace there, who Mel Gibson played in Braveheart. Now there's also the big cannon there, Mons Meg. Now apparently it was a rite of passage for newlyweds who got married here in Edinburgh to have relations inside Mons Meg. You could fit two people in there, by the way, but uh, apparently that tradition is dying out. And if you look over the ledge, you'll see the only cute cemetery that I know of, the Cemetery for the Soldier's Dogs. From Margaret's Chapel, head past the whiskey shop. They do have free um, shots of whiskey in there. A lot of the whiskey is really nice. I know at the end of some of my castle tours when my throat's really funny, I just go inside and grab a shot. Clears everything up. Then you get to the Crown Square. Now I didn't do much recording in the Crown Square. That's because a lot of those places are very sacred, such as the National War Memorial. Now that is a really moving place, though I didn't want to do any recordings or take any photos in there. Also you can see the crown jewels, also I couldn't take photos of them as well. But the crown jewels are basically what the king wears when he comes here to Scotland and wants to look all kingly I guess. There's also a big hunk of sandstone known as the Stone of Scoop. That was the coronation stone of every Scottish monarch going back to 850, though it did go missing in 1297. The English stole it. We did eventually get it back in 1996 though. There's also the Great Hall, and the Great Hall is probably one of the most romantic buildings inside the castle. Its ceiling is the hull of a Scandinavian boat. There's also these big sets of armour, there's weaponry all around the place. It's very Game of Thrones like. Now, if you're into Instagram, you want to get a photo inside part of the castle. That's the place I'd recommend you check out. There's also the Royal Apartments, which to, be, to me were just mainly paintings, but I mean, it does look somewhat lavish. But now my opinion about Edinburgh Castle. Is it worth visiting? Well, thank you, sweetheart. My wife just gave me a double shot espresso. She's awesome. When I first came to Edinburgh, I did pay to go inside because I love history. I'm a big history fan, I know not everyone's a history fan, but I liked the castle, I found it very interesting, but if you're not into history, if you're more into, you know, walking around a nice place, getting photos, enjoying the atmosphere, the best photos you can get of Edinburgh Castle are from the outside of the castle. See it on top of the hill, it looks really romantic that way, as soon as you're inside the castle, it looks like ugly rock. However, you do get really nice views of the city. So the best photos you can take in Edinburgh Castle are not the castle itself, but it's the views you get of what's outside the castle. Now you have to pay um, just over £20 to get inside if you show up. It is a little bit cheaper if you buy it online and you get a time ticket. Then you can get a bit of a discount. But is it worth going to? I'd say it's worth going to once. That's just my personal opinion. Even if you're not into history, go to Edinburgh Castle at least once. It's kind of like going to Paris and not going up the Eiffel Tower. That's my thoughts. Now, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you've been to Embra Castle, please put that in the comments below and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like this. But everyone, thank you so much for watching.